Welcome back to the third part of this series on programming the HP Prime Graphing Calculator. So we've looked at two techniques on how to create a program. Um, we'll stick with Newton's method again, and I'm sorry if that's a boring topic at this point. Um, but the idea here is again to uh, see how we can uh, create a program in yet a different um, style. So the first uh, Newton program we made uh, essentially Let's see, hard coded, we hard coded everything in. And then in our second program, what we did was we um we created a um an input screen that was nice and fancy looking so that the user can enter in their function guess and so on. So in this um video, what we'll do is we cr we'll create a um a program that acts more like a function, sort of like sine of x is a function where x is your argument. So we're gonna pass our arguments into the program from the command line. And then I'll talk about some neat features of um, of that type of program when run from this program catalog screen. So I'm going to take my, um, my Newt program and I'm going to copy it over into Newt 3. Okay, so Newt 3, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to create a program where we can pass arguments from the command line. So I'd like to be able to pass, for example, the function. So f, my guess, my uh, tolerance, and the max number of iterations. Okay. Um, so because f is um, declared already up here in the the uh, function declaration, we don't need f down here in the local declaration. Um, but we do need to change this line here. Okay, so um, we can delete all this. We're going to set n to max iter, and there's a reason why I'm actually creating separate variable names uh, rather than reusing capital N, uh, x new, and, and error, and so on. But um, that way will be explained in just a bit here. Okay, so um, x new then is our initial guess. Okay. What we want to do is we want to delete the input command. So we'll go to the uh, copy menu. And we'll delete all the way to here. So we'll just cut that. Okay, And I need to also then get rid of the corresponding end statement. OK. So everything should work as is now. Let's do a quick check to make sure that we don't have any syntax errors. And let's see how, how this runs. So we go to the home screen. Now remember, it's called Newt3. Let's go to the home screen. And I've actually um, already, already ran an instance of this um, previously. So here's how I actually call Newt3. We, um, we enter our function. Now notice that there are single quotes around our function. This is just the HP Prime's way of understanding a formula. Otherwise, because we're running from the home screen, uh, without these single quotes, it will actually evaluate x squared minus 5 as an expression before it uh, uh, returns the results to Newt 3. So to prevent that from happening, use single quotes. So my initial guess is 2. Here's my, my tolerance and max iterations of 100. And we hit Enter. And it produces the same result that we had before in our previous uh, version of, of the Newton's method program. So everything works as expected. Um, and uh, that's how you create a program in which uh, the arguments are passed from the command line. So uh, all we did was we added the uh, variables here, and they act as local variables. So we don't have to declare them down here. Now there's a reason why I actually chose to use these particular names that are different from these local variables here. And it's because of this neat feature. If you run a program that takes arguments from the command line, but you run it from the program catalog, so if I press run here, um, it turns that command line input into a graphical interface. Um, so here we have four input values for our function, our guess, max iterations, and tolerance. Now, having said that, um, there is one drawback. 
running it like this, it automatically initializes. I mean, let me exit out here. It initializes these local variables in uh, as real numbers. So what that means is, if we were to try to run this program, you know, our guess, our max iterations, and our tolerance, of course, those values will be numbers. But our function is going to be expected to be um, a, a number and of course, we actually want a, um, a formula. So if I, I, I type something like x squared minus 5 and hit OK, it's going to complain because it's expecting a real value input. Um, and that's one of the uh, setbacks of this. So we can actually slightly modify this, though. So um, let's go ahead and click More and save this as yet another Newt program, so Newt 4. And what I could do is I could just remove this so that we just enter in our guess, tolerance, and max iterations as our input. And then rather than having the user specify the function, well, what we could say is, well, let's just expect that f1. Um, so that would be, if I'm in, in the function app, if I type sim f1, there's my function there. So we'll assume that the user has already placed a function in there, and then we can use newt4, um, either using the command line. So remember, I removed the, the f. Um, my tolerance, and then max number of iterations. Let's see, I, I ran into an error. Um, yeah, let's, let's actually type in the, the program name correctly. OK, so everything still works. Um, as expected, but now if we go in the program catalog and scroll down to Newt 4 and run this, everything will work just as well here. So let's do a 3.5 as our initial guess, tolerance of 0.001, and let's do 50 max iterations. It'll stop well before that, of course. And if we hit enter, there are our values. So um, that's pretty much it there. as far as this video is concerned. Um, we can write programs that take input from the command line. And if we run it from the program catalog, it creates a nice um, graphical interface for us. And again, that's also why I chose to use different um, parameter names. It's, it's so that when the user does happen to do this, run from the catalog, um, we have um, Input or prompts, sorry, prompts that actually make sense or are relevant to our program. Okay, but uh, keep in mind that this would only work if the inputs are actually real-valued inputs. Um, that's as far as I've tested. Now, uh, I I know for sure that symbolic or algebraic expressions don't work. Um, I haven't tested other inputs such as complex values and and whatnot. Uh, I imagine some of those will work and some won't. But you know, you could tinker around for yourself. And uh, feel free to share with the rest of us if you do um, test this out. So that's all I have for this particular video. That will actually end this series as well. And um, if you have any questions, you know, just post a comment. Or if you have a particular request on, um, you know, a video explaining other aspects of the calculator, again, post a comment. So I hope you uh, all enjoyed that video, and uh, we'll catch you next video. Take care.